our hearts typically want to reject or dislike someone uh, who is out for their own glory. So maybe one of the reasons why you're hearing this and you're uncomfortable with it, or you've read this before and you still don't get it and you still don't like it and you want to focus on God being something other than centered on himself, one of the reasons is because you've come across people like that who are centered on themselves, so absorbed in themselves, and you don't like them. So why would I like God if he was like that? That's one of the, the first reasons. We'll, we'll tease it out in a moment. The second reason is because we see in Scripture that you and I are taught not to be like that. <laughs> so number one reason why we might struggle with this is we don't, we've met someone like this and we didn't like them. And secondly, we're taught in Scripture, hey, don't be self-centered. Philippians chapter 2, do everything uh, not out of vain conceit or selfish ambition, but consider others better than yourself, right? The Bible itself teaches you not to be like that. Uh, and so we're going, why wouldn't God submit himself to a similar kind of ethic or a similar kind of rubric? Um, I grew up in a home where my mom always said, uh, do as I say, not as I do. And that made me so mad, you know? It's like, how is that fair? Do as I say, not as I do. So that enrages us. We're going, God, it seems like you're doing that here. It seems like you're saying, do as I say, not as I do. So these are a couple of reasons why we typically trip up over this truth. So let me, um, let me kind of tease these out and show you why they're not what we think they are. So first, we don't like people who seem to be enamored by their own intelligence or strength or skill or good looks or wealth. Uh, we don't like cocky people, Right? We don't like them. We go, okay, I get it. You're better than everyone. And you kind of roll your eyes and you give the eye roll emoji three times in your phone. It's really big, you know, and you're like, yeah, that guy. Like, no one wants to be that guy. And so from our own human perspective, when we see someone acting that way, you know, when we see someone being the Penelope on SNL, always one-upping everything everyone else says, when we see that happening, we automatically assume, okay, that they're either covering up for some sort of deficiency or weakness that they have and deflecting from that, or they're just a massively insecure person and they're just so swinging the pendulum in the opposite direction. Like that's typically kind of where we come from on that. But the answer from scripture when it comes to God is that those things couldn't be farther from the truth. Insecurity has no part of God and his being. At no point is God insecure or uncertain or wavering or uh, unsure of himself. And he's also not weak that he might have deficiencies to cover up for. Romans 11.36 says that all things are from him and through him and to him. And he's not weak. The only reason we know anything that we know in creation or in our consciences or in our experiences is because God has created everything that we can see, feel, taste, and touch. He's not weak. He's not weak. In Acts 17, verse 20, uh, 25 says that he's not served by human hands as though he needed anything since he himself gives life to all men and breath and everything. He's not insecure. He's not insecure as though he's like, oh, I'm not sure I can do that one, or I'm not sure I'm adequate enough to accomplish that feat. M maybe you could help me. That God is not insecure uh, in those ways. This is, if you remember back to last semester, we talked about the, the self-sufficiency of God, the aseity of God. He's self-sufficient within himself. He's not, he's not insecure. And so everything that exists exists and owes its existence to God and no one can add anything to him which has already flowed from him. And so God's zeal seeks his own glory and to be praised by men uh, this, uh, uh, because, because it's, it's what's true, it's what's most uh, clear and defined in all of the universe. Uh, he has no weaknesses that he needs to compensate for deficiencies. And so when we come around this and we go, I'm not sure I want a God like that because I've met someone like that and I didn't like them. Well, God's not like that because when he shows off, he's not trying to compensate or, or brag about something that's not actually true to make you believe something about them that's, that's more than what they really are. He's actually showing himself off and calling you to look at something and bring attention to something because of what it actually is. We don't have to sing songs about God's beauty hoping that he's beautiful. 
God's not telling you to look at the mountains and see their majesty to consider his splendor and his might. He's helping you to look at something to see him for as he really is. When we say God's beautiful, we're not trying to make him look like something more than he is. We're trying to say what he really is. 